When you go into a double read store or onto a website, there are about a million different things you can buy. There's usually no real explanation of what makes one option better than another and no value judgment to help you. Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. And in this mini series, I'm responding to a request from Caroline to make a video about read tools and how they differ. I'll start with a disclaimer. I like what I like, but what I like is never the only way to do things. I want to be as objective as I can be for you, but this is not going to be a complete list of options and it's not going to be totally unbiased, but I do hope it can be helpful. A mandrel is a super basic tool. It's really just a handle for the oboe staple to give you something to hold onto as you wind and to support the interior dimension of that tube as the thread tightens. Some people use the mandrel to hold onto the reed as they scrape, though I do not. That's really just about what you're comfortable with and what makes your hand not cramp up as you work. There are a few different types of mandrel. These are called French because of the uh, fancy pattern here in the metal. And this one is a solid wood handle. And this one is a plastic handle. And these factors really make no difference at all. But the thing I really wanted to talk about today was the truism that your staples must fit your mandrel. Um, and the reason for this rule is obvious. You want everything you can control about your reed making to be as consistent as possible. So if you have the choice, you want all of your staples to be the same size and shape, and the easiest way to, to determine that is to put them on the mandrel and see. Um, so you can see here uh, that this tube, when I put it on, um, I can see my mandrel very slightly poking out through the top. Whereas this one, say, when I put it on, doesn't quite reach the top. So you can tell just from that experiment that these two tubes are slightly different, differently sized. Um, they're not perfectly matched. And this concept uh, of seeking consistency in your tubes makes perfect sense, especially when you're starting out. But I have heard people state this truism as like a law of nature. I've had heard people talk about going to the double reed store with their mandrel in hand and choosing the very, very best 20 tubes from a bin of hundreds. And this sort of feels a little crazy to me. Unless you have a reed shop right next door, the effort you go to here is going to outweigh the possible negative of having like one $4.50 tube that's a little bigger than the others. I'm the unfussy oboist, remember? I cannot be bothered with this. Besides, take a look at these mandrels. Who's to say that any one of them is better than any other? I've collected these sort of at random over the years and they really are all similar enough to work with, but they're unquestionably not precisely the same. I can take this same tube, this one, I can insert it on this and see that I've got about a millimeter uh, of unused tube. On this one, I have a good solid two millimeters of unused tube. It's a small um, staple, to be fair, but this uh, mandrel goes almost all the way to the top. And this mandrel fits it almost exactly. In other words, same staple, four different mandrels, four different fits. Um, who's to say that the one you happen to have is going to be the best one for you? Uh, are you so sure that like this mandrel is the gold standard that you want every staple to match? Plus, what if once you become competent with your reed making, you want to experiment with tubes? The four different kinds of oboe tubes here that I offer um, in my reed business are very different from each other. They each offer me some benefit for my reed making and they each have some side effects, but I like them all basically. Do I need to buy four different mandrels just to use them? Absolutely not. So the size of the mandrel is somewhat relevant. If you basically know what you like in terms of tubes and you can find or choose the size of mandrel that matches it best, go for it. Um, a really small tube, like this one I think is the smallest of these, um, might not be ideal. Like you can see as I put this uh, synthetic tube on, that I can see quite a lot of the mandrel poking through. And if my mandrel is basically pretty small and my tubes are basically pretty big, um, then I'm always going to have that visual weirdness to look at. So maybe that's not uh, so ideal for a lot of tubes. But is that a huge deal? No, absolutely not. Here's something I do care about. Sometimes, 
like here, I'm not sure you'll be able to see it on the video, but I could see it when I looked, you know, in the real light. Um, the oval at the top of the mandrel is not precisely lined up with the flat part of the handle, like here. Um, in other words, when you're winding and you want to sight down the tube, to see if your cane is straight on the oval. You can't visually use this big flat side of your mandrel to do that. Um, and it's really not that huge a problem, but you wanna know if it's the case so you don't rely on this visual aid if it is a false visual aid. So I always check that on a new mandrel before I start using it. One other thing we should discuss here is the English horn mandrel. I talked about this on my English horn read video, but I'll say it again here. I've never bothered to buy an English horn mandrel. I have lots of equipment and I love buying stuff. But my poor man's mandrel just works just fine. Um, you can't put an English horn tube like this directly on an oboe mandrel because the size is just so very, very wrong. You can see that the uh, mandrel comes all the way through, that it doesn't seat fully, it sort of rocks in place. It's not, uh, not helpful. Um, and, it, and of course it doesn't get enough support as I'm winding. But if you take an old oboe staple like this and you cut off the top couple of centimeters of uh, cork, put that on your mandrel, and suddenly it becomes a perfectly secure way to hold an English horn tube in place. So that has worked perfectly well for me and I've never bothered to spend the extra money to pick up uh, a specified fat English horn mandrel that I would never use for any other purpose. So um, to sum up, the mandrel for me is the least important choice that I make in my reed making. Uh, these Chirugi mandrels here are the ones that I sell at, from Janet Ingle Reeds. They're totally fine. They're perfectly basic and they do the job just fine. Um, I hope this video has been helpful to you. This has been a five minute reed maker lesson. You can follow these short videos right here on YouTube and you can subscribe if you wish. If you have questions or concerns or you want to order reeds or cane or mandrels, you can find me at JanetIngle.com. In fact, I would love to hear what else I can help you with and what my next short video should address for you. Let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.